friend of mine and me, we entered Leopold uh, to grab some food and a beer. And I remember, uh, normally I would go upstairs uh, because that's where uh, the music is and all. Unfortunately, that day I decided to like grab a quick bite and head home. So we were having a beer downstairs. In fact, I didn't even. I just placed my order and I was. Uh, and he received a call. He just walked out and came back in. Uh, in about a few minutes from sitting down, we just heard this sort of a blast and instant gunfire. I couldn't make out what it was initially, um, but then. Before we could really assess, my friend told me that someone's standing with a gun and firing. Uh, so we flipped the table over and we hid behind the table uh, and they go on the ground. Uh, so stuff running through my head were probably, you know, gang war, um, someone's trying to kill someone, stuff like that. Some psychos just entered and just, you know, firing. It didn't occur to me it would be a terrorist attack. In about a couple of minutes, I guess the firing stopped and I thought the guy had left. So from behind the table, I tried to peek and the guy was standing about say, maybe 5, 7, 10 feet away and he saw me move. Uh, so he turned around and he fired right at me. I got hit on my leg. I knew I was hit somewhere and he walked out. And I told my friend that, you know, I think I'm hit somewhere. Well, he wouldn't believe because I was absolutely normal. Just that my leg was broken and he couldn't even tell. As soon as he lifted my pant, he saw like bone fragments and stuff as what he told me later. Cops came in and then there was chaos, a little blurry after that, I sat in a taxi with him. We headed to that government hospital where I was on the floor and no one to attend to us literally. Uh, he was frantically trying to call people. Uh, my parents reached out um, to us because they saw it on the news. And then my dad turned up there with Ryan, uh, my brother-in-law. They arranged for an ambulance and um, rushed to Bombay hospital. Uh, some doctor just took me into the ward. Just they cut my clothes off and the last thing I remember is they poured hydrogen peroxide on my wound and that was like probably the most painful thing <laughs> physically I've ever gone through. Uh, I passed out after that and the next morning I woke up and then the news actually broke out that Bombay was under attack. I remember next morning waking up and like in filmy style <clears throat> flipping over the bedsheet to see if my leg was still there. You know going back to that Kulaba causeway was frightening enough. But I don't remember a time when it happened, but it just happened, you know, that whole Christmas season and things like that. This changed and it, life just goes back to normal. At least for me, it did. It seamlessly went, you know, back to normal. I guess it took me about two to three years till I let go of that stress, you know, that nothing's going to happen. I'm married, I have a kid. So over the eight, eight years, a lot has changed. When something like this strikes you, you get stronger. So maybe at some level they said, you know what? What has to happen will happen. There's nothing you can do about it. Yes, that positivity is what has kept me going. Whenever I feel difficult, like, you know, there are difficult times with anything in life, I think about this. This is actually the silver lining that actually helped me. That, you know, if I could get out of a situation like this and literally almost cycle, walk normally um, without physio, without counseling, I mean, I really have to thank my stars, but it's, I guess, it's some level positivity.